Within this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a static or dynamic sitemap within Next.js 13's new app router. I'm going to show two different ways of doing this. I'm going to do this using the built-in way that the Next.js team provided us following version 13.3, as well as using the Next sitemap npm package. I've created us a little sample project to work with for this example and for this little example site we're going to create our sitemap. So first we just have a home page what you can see right here. Then we have a little about us page. We have a blog page that takes in dynamic content to show each blog post. That looks like this. And then from there we have our dynamic pages that are generated based on the blog content. So if you have all static content and you're not worried about needing dynamic routes, you can just return a sitemap.xml file right within the app directory. However, if you're watching this and you're using a meta framework like Next, you probably are gonna need a dynamic sitemap. So let's go over how to do that. First, we'll cover the new built-in way that's built right into the framework itself. Within the new app directory, we can create a sitemap.ts or .js file, depending on what you're using. And within that, we can return an array of objects that will each represent a link within our sitemap. So here, I just created a basic sitemap for our static content. And you can see that over on the right here. This is being broadcasted on localhost 3000 sitemap.xml. Let's go over now how we can use this to create routes for our dynamic content that we're pulling from our local pocket base instance. So to get our dynamic content, what I've done is I've turned the function into an asynchronous function and I'm now pulling all the records from this URL into our sitemap file and I'm giving it a cache of no store, what essentially means that this will all be server side rendered when the request is made. And then from there, I am pushing a new object into our roots that will be returned at the end here for each of the slug values of for each of our pages. And then I'm also just doing a date, a new date for our last modified. This is how you're going to essentially create a dynamic sitemap using the built-in method right in Next.js. However, this doesn't help you with things such as index sitemaps or creating your robots.txt file or anything like that. And there is an NPM package that is specifically built for this. This is what I typically use in my projects is the NPM package. And it gives us a lot more versatility. I'll show you how that works now. Okay, to start, we have to install the npm package, and you can do this just by running npm i, and the package is called next sitemap. I'll be back once that's done. Perfect. Now that we have that package, what we can do is we can go in here and we need to create a configuration file for this package. And what this is called is it's called next sitemap.config.js. So I just deleted our sitemap.ts file that we used to demonstrate the built-in way of building a sitemap. I'm going to come back to this next sitemap config file that we just created. And for now, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a new root called server sitemap.xml. And then within that, I'm going to create a file called root.tsx. So what I added here is I imported get server side sitemap. This comes right from the next sitemap package as well as a type for the actual sitemap fields. And then from there I did basically the exact same thing that we did on the built-in way of doing things. What is I did a fetch call with a cache of no store. So meaning that this will all be server side rendered. I got all the items and now what I'm doing is I'm creating the location and last mod fields within this object 
and then I'm calling the get server side sitemap with these fields that we just generated. Now let's go over to our sitemap configuration file and let's put in all the details that we're going to need to make our sitemap exactly the way we want to. We are then going to go into our next sitemap configuration file that we created and we're going to add this. We're going to add a module exports object that is going to contain our site URL whether we want to generate a robots.txt file we're going to give it links that we want to exclude from the sitemap so we're going to have two sitemaps here we're going to have our server sitemap and then we're going to just have our sitemap for our static content so we want that and because within the server one that we're generating we're doing all of our blog stuff we're going to give it a wildcard operator and we're going to make it so that anything that's after our blog will not be shown on our static sitemap. Then we have some options for a robots text file. So we want to essentially, I'm just putting this in for an example, but we can disallow, say you have an admin route that you don't want shown as well as we need to add on an object for our additional sitemaps. I'll give the documentation for this. I'll put, I'll put that down in the description below so you can check that out. And I know that this is a little bit confusing, but we also then need to add to our package.lock file, we need, we're gonna add a post build script. So this means that we're going to run next sitemap and we're going to give it the flag of the file that our configuration file is in. So let's run this. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do npm run build. Okay, perfect. So what you can see now is it's given us our sitemap indices. So if we go here, we'll be able to see our basically an index of all of our sitemaps. And then this is showing us the sitemap that was generated. So let's do npm run start. Perfect, so now we're running a production build. I'm gonna refresh that and I'm gonna go sitemap.xml. And now you're gonna see that we have two sitemaps listed here. So let's grab the first one and see what this does. So now you can see this shows us our three static pages, so our about us, our base root, and our blog. Now let's go back here and I'm gonna grab our server sitemap. So remember that this is server side rendered on the fly. So perfect, now we can see both links for our dynamic content. This might seem a little bit redundant. It might make more sense to you to just use the built-in method. However, considering things like, if we go here, this will generate our robots file. Robots.txt. This will generate our robots file and will show us our sitemaps. The, the option of using the next sitemap package, it gives you a lot more versatility. There's a lot more you can do, especially at the time of recording this. I do believe that within the next few months and with versions like 13.5 or maybe 13.6 coming out, that there's gonna be better built-in support for sitemaps. However, at the time of recording this, if you need versatility, I recommend you just use the NPM package. That's what I use for all my personal projects. So I hope that all made sense. So we went over two different ways that you can generate static and dynamic sitemaps within Next.js. The built-in way is a bit simpler. However, you leave a lot of versatility and you're gonna have to manually create your robots.txt file. The second method we went through was using the next sitemap NPM package and that's my personal recommendation for what you should use it will take you a bit more time to set it up especially your first time however once you get it it'll give you a lot more versatility long term but yeah that's all i have for you for today 
Please subscribe if you found this content beneficial. And leave a comment about what you liked or disliked. I'm really trying to get better at this YouTube thing. So yeah, thank you and have a good one.